Today's big outrage, or the, of the outrage of the past few days, is the attempt by Trump and his hack that he has in charge of the Postal Service to rig this fall's election by tampering with um, the USPS, making them pick, haul out mailboxes, drop off mailboxes, and mail sorting machines, and all this other crap. And of course, um, I don't know why they just, the USPS, why these workers just flat out ref can't refuse to just carry out this kind of crap. It's obviously an attempt to rig the election. And he, <clears throat> and supposedly the excuse is that it's a cost-saving measure and all this other bullshit. Now, some people have said, um, and I say some people, some bloggers I've seen, and I've even feel this way to a, an extent, that the reason Trump is attacking the U.S. Postal Service right now is not an attempt to privatize it further, or for privatize it, which, of course, that can't be done anyway. Um, or even that uh, he's afraid that more people are going to vote Democratic if they vote by mail. Of course, they've always had absentee ballots, and nobody complained about it. But because of COVID-19, it's dangerous to, for people to go in, to, in person to vote. So, they, uh, his thing is, he, th he really thinks, I think on one level, that he's going to lose in a big way if he has, uh, if it's all uh, mail-in or drop-off. But there's the other level is, some would say, he is doing this. Because to have them go in person and use those um, electronic voting or whatever you want to call it, those kind of machines, it makes it easier to commit fraud. And if he is trying to hide the fact that they have stolen elections in recent years, so... To have the people go in, it makes it easier for the tabulating machines to be manipulated. And we know Russia has had its fingers in the till in the last election. So that's a possibility. But there is no evidence that mail-in makes it more likely that Democrats will prevail in the elections. That's, it doesn't benefit either side more than one side more than the other that's been pretty much told and the era so there's that and then they had to back off a little bit uh, this the joy critter had to back off a little bit and he decided he was going to halt doing any more um, whatever hauling mailboxes and stuff away from western states but continue to do it in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, and Ohio, and those kinds of states that they managed to, that Russia man managed to help finagle uh, Trump in there last time. But I digress. Anyway, the Arizona Secretary of State said, uh, accused President Trump of trying to derail November's general election by hamstringing the U.S. Postal Service and see if they could delay the mailing, then those votes don't count because they have to be postmarked. So that's one of the things here. So it's another way to rig elections. Okay. In Arizona, it's against the law to delay the delivery of a ballot. I've asked the Attorney General to investigate recent changes at USPS and whether or not the Trump administration has committed a crime. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they've committed a crime and it shouldn't even be an impeachment matter. It should be a law enforcement matter. Just arrest them and throw them in damn jail 
for mail fraud. But what do I know, right? I'm just I'm just a voter. Anyway, on on the related matter, six, about six years ago, in the 2014 election, I was an election observer, and I wrote a post on my blog about how it was done in Oregon at, in terms of mail-in voting. Mail-in voting is great. Oh my gosh, it's so it's so much better than going in person. But anyway, I wrote, this was the first time I volunteered for anything political since moving up here in 2010. As readers know, I was involved in Northern Nevada elections for a number of years with volunteering in a fall 2004 presidential election and with being a delegate for the 2006-2008 Democratic County and State Conventions. I had been too penniless to really get out and do anything up here, but this opportunity came up so I took advantage of it. There were two of us observers there during the four-hour stint or shift. The other person was a Republican observer. She had done it before, so she didn't need to have the orientation. The Jackson County, cl County Clerk, Chris Walker, showed me around the area and gave me a rundown of what it was I was supposed to do. She showed me the main areas where the election officials work. There is a lot of work. It is a lot of work, especially with Oregon having nothing but mail-in voting. After the envelopes with the ballots are batched, all of them are run through a machine which copies the signatures on the outside envelope. A group of officials check via computer those signatures against the signatures already on file when voters register to vote. They check every single signature of every single envelope to make sure they are comparable. They are further verified by two other officials so that each signature is checked three times. Those that appear not to match or those that are believed to be forgeries or those that aren't signed get put aside and the voter is called to come in and re-register or sign his or her ballot. None of these officials are forensic experts, but they have quite a bit of experience in handwriting analysis. It is in the largest area where the envelopes containing the ballots are brought in to USPS mail trays with about a hundred to a tray and are processed to prepare to be run through the tabulating machines. In this, on this day there were a total of 36 election officials at 18 tables with two people at each table. The two people are of different parties, one Democrat and one Republican, although I noticed there was at least one independent in the mix. That way it ensures there is no fraud involved in the preparation of the ballots. One of the two goes and picks up one of the trays to bring to their table. At that point, the envelopes in the tray are divided in half so that each person has an equal stack of envelopes and ballots to work with. They first take out the secret envelopes from the mailing envelopes. Then they finish with that. Then when they finish with that, they rubber band those and put them in the tray. Then they open the secret envelopes and take the ballots out, which are stacked and set aside. Those envelopes are then rubber banded and put in the trays. Then the officials check each ballot to make sure there are no unusual marks or they are damaged in some fashion. Those that are are put in a file in the middle of the table to be worked on later. When the official is done checking his or her stack of ballots, that person switches with the other person to double check to make sure nothing was missed. When the pair of officials are finished with the ballots, they put them in a box to be sent to the tabulating room so the ballots are tabulated. The ballots that are torn or damaged are recopied on a new ballot with a red marker, with one official reading off who and what the voter voted and the other person using the marker to make a new copy. The person reading off the original ballot checks while the other person is marking a new ballot. When that is done, those ballots are put in the box with the other ballots. If there are markings that may not be counted by the machine, the official puts a tape over it and makes the correction. If there are questions about how that person voted, those ballots get set aside for further research. The trays with the envelopes are put on a long table and the boxes with the ballots are also put there. Then the officials get another tray and the process starts all over again. The tabulating room has four machines. These machines remind me of scaled down versions of optical card readers like the one I used when I worked at Harry and David many years ago 
to read time cards and packing slip items. The tabulating operators take a box with a completed ballots. The ballots are numbered, pull some out of the box, stack them in the hopper, a la a photocopy machine, pushes a button, and the ballots are run through this machine very quickly. Unless, of course, there is a paper jam, which invariably there is. There are also some ballots that the machine rejects. Those ballots are put aside for further research and put in a separate envelope. When the ballots are completed, they are put back into the box, marked with a number sign to show they were tabulated, and are brought back into the room where all the ballot boxes are kept. Almost all of the election officials are retirement age, and the vast majority are women. And it was a real interesting experience. So I thought I'd share that. That's how they did it in Oregon six years ago, and I don't think it's changed much, if, if at all. But there's very little fraud there. I mean, they put all kinds of... Um, whatever you want to call it, means, they put all kinds of means in there to minimize the chances of fraud. So, we know that Trump is trying to rig this year's election. That isn't anything new. And um, let's see what the heck happens. 